are the Florida Gators finally, finally making a move on the offensive line? You are Locked On Gators, your daily podcast on the Florida Gators, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome back to another episode of Locked On Gators, part of Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for being Locked On Gators, your first listen of the day every day. We are available daily and free regular the podcast and on YouTube. Happy Monday. I am Brandon Olson. Now through September 22nd, all FanDuel customers can bet $5 and get a three-week free trial to NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. And like I said, the Florida Gators finally making a move on the offensive line. It's about damn time. Uh, I was about to, I was about to. I was about to sing Lizzo. I'm not going to lie to you. I opted to not do that. But Florida Gators had their second spring or their second fall scrimmage uh, this week, which we'll talk about for the entirety of this show. But one of the most notable things was they tried some new stuff on the offensive line. Um, Most notably, Rod Kearney, who, if you've been listening to this show since he committed, he was the number one. He's my favorite offensive line commit under Billy Napier and Rob Sale. I think he's a tremendously talented football player. I thought his high school film was really good for an offensive lineman. Played guard in high school, got on campus, moved to center. Now has been cross-training at center in both guard spots. So, and in this scrimmage, he played both guard spots with the starters. He played at left guard and right guard with the rest of the starters for the Florida Gators, which to me tells me they're trying to figure out the best lineup because that's always been what we've talked about here. And that is always what I will talk about as far as building a good offensive line is not about just putting your five best offensive linemen. It's about putting your best offensive line unit because it is left tackle has to be able to work at the left guard. Left guard has to be able to work at the left tackle and center center has to work with both the guards. Right guard has to work with the center and right tackle. Right tackle has to work with the right guard. Both tackles also have to work work with tight ends. A lot of it's about playing as a unit. And if you don't if you don't know that, just that's what it genuinely it's about playing as a unit. Like I've said before, like I cover the New York Giants. I've spoken to Andrew Thomas and his his thing last year where he still had a great year, but the offensive line was horrible, was he was just like we need some stability so we're not constantly trying to learn how to communicate with new guys. Uh, and that was a big thing that's been a big focus, and that's what the Gators are focusing on. Well, last year, they had a similar issue. They constantly had offensive linemen cycling in and out because of injury. And there were constant miscommunications. It led to some pass breakdowns, and then they just or protection breakdowns, and then they just weren't a good unit. It's possible that we go into this season – seeing left tackle Austin Barber, left guard Nigel Harris, center Jake Slaughter, right guard Rod Kearney, and right tackle Brandon Crenshaw-Dixon. That'd be a chef's kiss for me. I do. I think you're, you've got one of the best centers in the country right now. Left tackle, when he's healthy, can be pretty good. Still a need to prove it, though. Right tackle Brandon Crenshaw-Dixon, great in the Mountain West. This is the SEC. And then two young guards one of whom played last year and played well when he played last year. I'd love to see any combination that gets me Najee Harris, Jake Slaughter, Rod Kearney on the field, on the interior. And I think that because playing Rod Kearney at guard, he's cross training, which means he's playing center still. So playing Rod Kearney at guard does not mean that he's no longer your backup center. Because right now, I think that's a bit of a big argument whenever I've said, oh, Rod Kearney should play guard like with the starters. I think a big response has been, well, what about your backup center? Which, fair fair response, right? Because last year, your backup center played more than your starting center because Kingsley Walken was constantly hurt and Jake Slaughter stepped up, played very well, now has the starting spot. So I think that it's fair when people, when I've said, hey, Rod Kearney should be starting a guard and people say, well, what about your backup center spot? 
Well, I have an answer there. It's still Rod Kearney. Again, he's cross-training to play both guard and center. He could play with the ones at guard, with the twos at center. It's possible. And I, I, as far as managing that that load, that rep load uh, during practice, easy. Play him basically 60% of the snaps at guard with the starters. Then rotate in a new guard who would be his replacement. Then play him at center with the backups or, or even the starters if you want. And then take him out when you rotate there again. So you're not necessarily giving him more snaps in practice. You're just giving, you're distributing them differently. Um, but you'd have Rod Kearney as your second center and Jason Zandamella as your third center, unless you feel at some point Jason Zandamella will be ready to be your second center this year. So long-term though, you'd have Kearney at guard, Zandamella at center. And I will say this because last week, Coming out of the spring scrimmage, or I keep saying spring scrimmage, the first scrimmage, the offensive line was a concern. We talked about that. Um, and I said, you know, I'm going to give them another week or so. And if there's nothing there, then I'm going to be concerned. And I will say that it's definitely still a concern that you're trying to figure out the offensive line. Because what I said last week was, well, this is the first time we're really seeing the starting offensive line practice together. Because Austin Barber missed a lot of the spring. So I was like, well, this is them trying to figure out that chemistry. This isn't so much them trying to figure out the chemistry. It's trying to figure out who you're going to start at all. So that, that's where I think it's my, my worry level has risen a little bit because you're no longer oh, this starting group is trying to figure out their chemistry. It's, oh, we're trying to figure out the starting group. So even if we hear things like, oh, like, like they're coming together, they're putting things together. For me, I'm looking at it now as we are less than two weeks away from August 31st when Florida hosts Miami. And the offensive line is still just trying to figure out who's going to be their starting five out there. I think it's reasonable to say that I don't know if they'll be good or even decent at the start of the season. Like, like let's say they end up finding the combination that they look at and they say, this is our best combination today. They, they make that decision. Like, like just, just today on, on Monday, August 19th, they go, this is going to be our starting five. We figured it out. Now it's just about putting them together. Then I'm, I'm pretty, I'm not going to be too upset about it, but I don't think they'd be, uh, we'll say, at what their baseline should be on August 31st if they had less than two weeks to practice now coming together. I think you could say, hey, maybe a little bit into the season, they'll be at what their baseline should be. But it's definitely, I think, a cause for concern. Again, I'm not one to pull, shoot, or hit the panic button, or, or sound the alarm, or break a glass in case of emergency, whatever whatever term you want to use. Um, I'm not one to really do that. I am, again, my, like my, my worrisome level has, has risen a little bit since last week. But again, I, I will give them a, a little, little, little while longer before I get more into like, oh, buddy, poop the bed there. Um, <laughs> we are about to talk about two bright young players in the secondary. Saying next on Lockdown Gators. You've heard us talk a lot about FanDuel. Maybe because it's America's number one sports book. Just saying, well, this time we have something a little different for you. Now through September 22nd, all FanDuel customers can bet $5 and get a three-week free trial of NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. Then, with a YouTube TV base plan, you'll be able to watch every regular season game. Every regular season Sunday afternoon out-of-market game. All you need is a Google account and a current form of payment, and you can cancel Anytime. Just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to download America's number one sportsbook. 
Thanks for being locked on Gators, your first listen of the day, every day. We are available daily and free reviews of the podcast and on YouTube. And like I said, I wanted to talk about two very specific young secondary players for the Florida Gators. One of them being Jakeem Jackson. Uh, Jakeem Jackson, of course, highest rated Gator in the 2023 recruiting class. So last year is a true freshman season. Highest rated Gator in the class at, at any position. And he was the one where, when he was coming out of high school, there were people posting clips of him torching poor Monty McLean. And, and some people were like, well, I'd rather have the guy that could torch poor Monty McLean than poor Monty McLean. And you could feel however you feel about that argument. Um, I don't, I didn't think it makes a ton of sense. You're having a receiver torch a DB. Um, I don't think that that means anything about how that receiver plays DB. You know what I'm saying? But Jakeem Jackson does have the elite physical tools. He's listed as uh, 6'1". That's, and I don't, like, this is one of those things we talked about with Ben Hanks Jr., who, by the way, committed to the Florida Gators last year. Let's go. Or last, uh, this weekend. So, let's go. That's great. But Jakeem Jackson listed as 6'1", or, or six foot and half an inch. But like Ben Hanks Jr., long arms. I, I'd argue that Jakeem Jackson probably has longer arms than Ben Hanks Jr. Um, Jakeem's just got those long limbs. Like, like that. And I understand that I think a lot of people look at that and they're like, okay, like, cool. Like, it's a great treat to have as a DB. Got to get in front of the receivers. It, it, it's great there. Uh, elite physical tools like those long arms. Six one or six foot and a half and whatever. That's a decent size for a corner anyway. Elite speed. Great change of direction. Like, I think he, when you look at him, athletically you go okay if we're making a corner in a video game it's probably going to look a bit like him it's probably going to look a bit like jakeem jackson then we could talk about the the last last season when jakeem jackson was a true freshman that vanderbilt game i continue to i continue to talk about that game as the moment that i knew jakeem jackson because as a recruit jakeem jackson very good, very raw, but elite physical tools. You swing on that. Does a recruit? Pretty raw. Ton of promise, though. But we see those guys all the time. Shaquem Jackson is a true freshman against Vanderbilt. That was kind of the game where I was like, okay, I think he's got it mentally. Because you watch the Vanderbilt game, Shaquem Jackson gets beat for a very big play. Not a touchdown, but a very big play. That same drive, Vanderbilt goes at him again. Right after, they go at him in the end zone against a senior player. Senior just as an upperclassman. Um, and Jakeem Jackson breaks it up. No hesitation. Like, like n- there was no hesitation. No, no, oh, wait, I, I can't screw this up. He just went out there and balled. And that's the kind of confidence, the short-term memory, that when you see that from a corner, you go, okay. I, like, I, I feel like pretty confident that they've got the mental aspect down here. Then, this past weekend, Jakeem Jackson, from, from what we've been told, strong scrimmage with Devin Moore out. Strong showing in the scrimmage where, again, Devin Moore's been banged up throughout his entire career. You need more viable options. And Jakeem Jackson looks like he could be the guy where you watch him and you say, okay, well, he's the next man up. Then, at safety... You've got a true freshman that's garnering attention, we'll say. And not only a true freshman, but a true freshman that was one of the last commits for the 2024 recruiting class for the Florida Gators. And when he committed, was one of the lower one of the lower ranked commits in the class. He ended up be, being a blue chip at the end of it. Um, but the rankings were not super high on him earlier strong spring game like i i noted gregory smith the third quarterback in high school played safety as a senior strong spring game like again he had the 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 just i i feel like when you have that quick trigger as a safety that's a freshman like that yeah you're just learning how to play the position i feel like that kind of confidence that kind of decisiveness that kind of quick trigger again just doesn't come easy and at six three and a quarter, 
great athlete. Like he's another one has the physical tools, but it's about, can you put it together? But immediately again, the spring game immediately at the sec level was firing down, making decisions, coming downhill and attacking. And he did that a lot in this spring game. And he's been impressing in the fall. And he's one of those players where we've been hearing it from other players and coaches of, man, he's been really good. And that's where things get a little tough for me because, man, he's really good. But I still want to say he's a true freshman at safety, which safety is one of those spots where you could play it as a freshman. We saw Jordan Castell do it last year. Um, and I think that it's easier than playing, say, linebacker as a true freshman. But it's still a little tough for a true freshman there. Feel good about your other safeties ahead of him. But all reports that we hear from the media and people I've spoken to inside the program, all reports that we hear are, they really like Greg Smith the third. So it's very possible that we're seeing a true freshman earn legitimate playing time for the Florida Gators this year. I think again, skill set wise, he's got all the physical tools to be a really good football player, really good DB at the SEC level. Uh, he's a recruit that again, when he was taken by Florida, there was uh, quite a bit of not super positive you know, impact or not super positive reviews from some fans where it was like, oh, well, he's, you know, the competition's Toledo and and uh, I think it was USF and other schools like that. And it's like, well, they're getting early returns on him. If he continues the trajectory, he's going to find playing time and become genuinely a damn good football player at the next level. So I think that's important for Greg Smith. Now it's uh, it, it's time for the receiver room, which kind of taken shape. I guess we could say taking shape, right? Good or bad? We'll talk about that next on Locked on Gators. Passion, drive, and patience. That's a formula for winning championships. And it's also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors is everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance with superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Ready to speed, power, or style. eBay Motors has you covered with over 122 Million parts for your number one ride or die. You always find exactly what you need. And if you don't, if you don't find what you need, eBay guaranteed fit, the parts guaranteed to fit your ride every single time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber and not cash. All the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home huge wins. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only, exclusions apply, and eBay guaranteed fit is only available to U.S. customers. Thanks again for making Lockdown Gators your first listen of the day. Every day, we are available daily and free. Wherever you listen to the podcast and on YouTube to wrap up today's show, talking about the receiver room, just because we have some answers. One update that's not a happy one. Um, you know, we'll, we'll start with the not happy update first. Freshman wide receiver Jare Tank Hawkins, who's known as the fastest player on the team. Uh, team picture came out yesterday. Right arm in a sling for Tank Hawkins. We don't really have an update. We were told that from, from the scrimmage, you know, we were told a hey, fully healthy scrimmage, no injuries. Uh, I'm assuming this is maybe one of those cases where we go, hey, it happened in the scrimmage. After the scrimmage, he was like, hey, this might be bothering me. Got to check it out. Say whatever it is. Uh, but Tank Hawkins, right arm in a sling. And we have Billy Napier's press conferences on Monday. So... Should get an update from Napier there today. I'm sure someone will ask about it, considering it's brand new information. Uh, and we'll try to see. Hopefully, nothing serious, but we'll see there. Um, on the bright side, I guess. It's a true freshman that we don't know if he had a role. I do think, though, this is one of the things where even if he did have a role or was working for a role, this is going to hold him back for at least a little bit. Uh, and could hurt the long-term impact that I'll have this year. But it's like, oh, well, you know, because you didn't get to rev up, really. Uh, so we'll see there with Tank Hawkins. Elijah Badger, the very highly ranked, very heavily recruited uh, transfer portal receiver from Arizona State. Still learning the playbook, which 
I mean, that's not surprising at all. It's really, I understand that a lot of Florida Gator fans think that it's pretty easy to just pop in and pick up a college playbook. College playbooks are thick, especially a Florida playbook where there's a lot of motion and, and there's option routes and you got to kind of figure things out. It's not super easy to pick up. Um, I'm not, I'm not surprised and I'm not worried about it yet. I do feel like to learn a playbook when you've had two weeks of practices, I think it's fair to go, yeah, you know, he probably needs a little more time. It wouldn't shock me if the coaching staff was going, hey, Badger, uh, focus on these packages at least so that we know you're able to step in and play significant snaps right away. We'd prefer you knew the whole thing. I obviously will get you up there. Um, but it's not something that concerns me at all. I do think that, yeah, I, I think that picking up a college playbook is not super easy. It takes some time. But if you learn, you know, the bulk of what the offense wants to do, you're going to be able to play and contribute. It's just going to be probably certain packages you won't be in uh, where they say, hey, yeah, learn a lot of the 12 personnel packages. Learn a lot of the, the pistol 12 personnel with a bunch that learn a lot of those because we're going to call those and you're going to be on the field for those. So you'll be able to contribute on most of those plays. Um, and so it wouldn't shock me there. We've also looking, we've also looked at the combinations as who is going to be out there. Like who, who's going to be the receivers that you see the most. Is it Khalil Jackson, Elijah Badger, Trey Wilson? Is it Elijah Badger, Trey Wilson, Shimmery DK? Is it Khalil Jackson, Trey Wilson, Shimmery DK? Realistically, all four of them. Khalil Jackson, Trey Wilson, Elijah Badger, Shimmery DK. Um, we will see who's going to be the first receiver out there. It really doesn't matter. I do think those four are going to play a lot of snaps this year. And so I look at it like I've, I've always looked at it. Khalil Jackson or Elijah Badger at one of the receiver spots. Trey Wilson at the other outside receiver spot. Shimmery DK in the slot. Or... Khalil Jackson at one receiver spot, Elijah Badger at the other receiver spot, Trey Wilson as the slot. I think that that's how it's looking. Not as like who's first, who's second, but where do we want Trey? How many X's do we want in the field in terms of Khalil Jackson and Elijah Badger's play style? I think that's how you more so look at it. Not who's starting, who's what. Where do we want Trey? If he's in the slot, then DK's off the field and Elijah Badger and K-Jack are both on. If we want Trey out wide, okay, Jack, Badger, whoever, DK, and then Trey. Hell, you could put Trey in the backfield in some packages. You could bring Khalil Jackson, Elijah Badger, Chimray DK in the slot, Trey Wilson in the backfield with Arliss out there. Good luck stopping it, right? So I think this is one of those kind of good issues where it's like yeah we, well we have four really good receivers that we think or we have four receivers that we feel are really good it's just about putting them on the field in in different combinations and getting different uses out of them and i'm totally fine with it aiden mizell has been having a strong camp as well he's a guy where looks way more fluid as a route runner i don't know what it is if he's been doing yoga or something but his hips look less tight than they used to um, we'll see what it's like when he's fully padded and, and playing in games and, and worry about that workload as well. Um, but he looks more fluid than he did before. He could be that fifth receiver that we've kind of been waiting for. We've kind of been watching and just going, Hey, who's, who's going to be the guy that steps up? Looks like it finally could be Aiden Mizell, which would be great for Florida Gators, uh, this season at least. And next, hopefully next being locked on Gators, your first listen of the day. Every day we are available daily and free reviews in the podcast and on YouTube. We'll be back tomorrow. Talk more Florida Gators football for Lockdown Gators. I'm Brandon Olson. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter at WNS underscore Brandon. Uh, find all of our college football dynasty modes and and our Madden franchise mode with whole nine sports with W H O L E N I N E sports on YouTube. And I'll see you all next time.